The Lord of the Rings trilogy is littered with epic sacrifices, gruesome deaths, and both happy and sad endings. From mighty warriors to slimy bad guys, here are the last words of these fallen Lord of the Rings heroes and villains. Before we can discuss final words, it's important to know which final words we're talking about. After all, in addition to author J.R.R. Tolkien's original books, there's the animated Lord of the Rings films created in the late 70s and early 80s, and of course, Peter Jackson's live-action trilogy. In this video, we'll go with a combination of the live-action adaptations and the original books. However, some of the fallen characters still don't have concrete last words in either version. When this happens, we'll give a brief rundown of their final moments. After all, actions speak louder than words. While not a primary character in The Lord of the Rings, Isildur shows up early in the Fellowship of the Ring film and is referenced throughout the narrative. The ancient warrior who cut the One Ring from Sauron's hand, Isildur dies when he's ambushed by orcs while trying to escape across the Great River. In the film, his last word comes long before his death, when he rejects Elrond's plea for him to throw the ring into the fires of Mount Doom. Destroy it! No. However, in Tolkien's book Unfinished Tales, Isildur's final line is a bit juicier. Knowing he's about to be killed, Isildur's son, Elendor, tells his father to bring the One Ring to the Elves before it's recaptured. His father replies, I knew that I must do so, but I feared the pain nor could I go without your leave. Forgive me and my pride that has brought you to this doom." Isildur's father, Elendil, is the first king of the realms of Gondor and Arnor at the end of the Second Age. During the same time, Gilgalad is an elven leader who rules over the bulk of the elves that remain in Middle-earth. Eventually, Sauron picks a fight with them, and the two leaders form the Last Alliance, a massive coalition that gathers together to attack Sauron and Mordor. The Last Alliance is ultimately victorious, but at the expense of both of these High Kings. They are killed in combat with Sauron just before Isildur cuts the One Ring from the villain's hand using his father's broken sword. While neither character is officially given final words, they appear in both the books and films. Their brave actions set the stage for Sauron's first defeat at the end of the Second Age. Everyone is fascinated by Smeagol, the hobbit-like creature eventually known as Gollum. He steals the One Ring from a friend on his birthday and in the process murders his companion. That friend is Deagle, another hobbit-like creature. Five centuries before the Lord of the Rings story begins, Deagle finds the One Ring while out fishing with his friend. When Smeagol sees the ring, he demands that Deagle give it to him since it's his birthday. In the opening scene of Return of the King, the poor fellow's response winds up being his last. In the book, Deagle says a little more, telling Smeagol, I don't care, I have given you a present already, more than I could afford. I found this, and I'm going to keep it. Sadly, poor Deagle doesn't realize the tragic irony in his statement, and winds up paying a much greater price. Although Gandalf doesn't technically die, he certainly gives everyone the impression that he does, so his seemingly final words are still worth noting. While staring down the Balrog, he shouts, You shall not pass! Unfortunately, although Gandalf successfully defeats the Balrog, the fiery monster winds up taking the wizard down with him. As Gandalf realizes he's about to fall, he cries out to his friends, Fly, you fools! Identical in both book and movie, the words communicate a sense of care and frustration which pushes the rest of the Fellowship members into action. While he does return later in the story, Gandalf's sacrifice is still a powerful moment that's earned a spot on this list. Also known as Durin's Bane, the fiery Balrog demon seems indestructibly powerful in the Fellowship of the Ring, but the book reveals he's actually a refugee, fleeing from the catastrophic War of Wrath. In that war, Sauron's original master, Morgoth, is defeated, and his surviving servants scatter across the continent looking for places to hide. The Balrog relocates deep beneath the dwarf kingdom of Khazad-dûm for nearly 2,000 years. Eventually, he's disturbed by the dwarves, at which point he drives them away, and the area becomes known as Moria, or the Black Pit. 
When the Balrog attacks the Fellowship, Gandalf confronts the demon on the bridge of khazad -dûm and sends them both tumbling into the abyss below. As they fall, they begin an intense duel that progresses from deep underground all the way up to the top of the mountains above. There, with clouds, fire, and lightning surrounding them, the Balrog is finally killed by Gandalf. The Balrog doesn't get any last words, but its death clears the way for the dwarves to eventually return to their ancient home of khazad -dûm. While most of the main characters in Peter Jackson's film are from Tolkien's original text, the Uruk-hai Captain Lurtz was entirely Jackson's creation. Lurtz leads Saruman's forces in pursuit of the Fellowship and provides an effective foe for the main characters to defeat in the otherwise villainless finale of the Fellowship of the Ring. After shooting Boromir full of arrows, the Orc Captain takes on Aragorn in a one-on-one -on -one duel. After a harrowing showdown, the Ranger wins out, and Lurtz meets his demise with his arm and head removed from his body. Lurtz doesn't have many lines in the film, and doesn't say anything at all as he quietly duels multiple members of the Fellowship during the film's ending battle. However, shortly before his last breath, the Uruk High can be heard shouting to his men. Created with only one purpose, Lurtz's final words are focused on his mission, just like his whole life. Heir to the steward of Gondor, Boromir joins the Fellowship of the Ring only to succumb to the lore of the Ring. But after attempting to steal it from Frodo, Boromir repents and sacrifices his life defending Merry and Pippin. Moments before he takes his final breath, Boromir confesses to Aragorn that he tried to take the Ring and that Merry and Pippin have been kidnapped. He also urges Aragorn to go to help his people before uttering his final words. Followed you, my brother, my captain, my king. The revelation that Boromir finally accepted Aragorn as his king is the perfect way to resolve his previous scorn for the ranger at the Council of Elrond. In the books, Boromir's final line reads, Farewell, Aragorn. Go to Minas Tirith and save my people. I have failed. Aragorn responds that Boromir has not failed, but conquered, prompting a smile from Boromir before he breathes his last. In Tolkien's books, the elf Haldir helps the Fellowship out as they travel through Lothlorien, but after the travelers depart down the Great River, we don't ever meet him again. In the movies, though, Peter Jackson brought back the Lothlorien guide for the climactic battle of the Two Towers. As the men of Rohan prepare to fend off Saruman's hordes at Helm's Deep, Haldir unexpectedly shows up with a bunch of high-quality archers. Unfortunately, in the ensuing battle, Haldir meets an untimely death. Just before Haldir's death, he shouts something in his native tongue to his retreating men. However, since we aren't sure of the translation, we'll instead highlight the last thing he says after arriving with his troops. Facing King Theoden, he says he brings word from Elrond, saying that they wish to honor the old alliance between men and elves. We are proud to fight alongside men once more. Originally sent to resist Sauron, Saruman the White Wizard eventually becomes corrupted and vies for power himself. This leads to his overthrow in the Two Towers and his eventual death at the hands of Grima Wormtongue in The Return of the King. In the extended film version, Saruman's death comes as he stands on top of the Tower of Orthanc in the midst of the drowned ring of Isengard. As he argues with Gandalf and his allies, Wormtongue attacks him from behind, sending him careening off the edge of the tower. Just before he's killed, Saruman can be heard saying his last words. You withdraw your guard, and I will tell you where your doom will be decided. I will not be held prisoner here. In the books, Saruman survives until the end of the return of the king. By then, he's going by the name Sharky whom Frodo and his friends discover has orchestrated the destruction of the Shire. Defeated at last by the hobbits, Saruman orders a broken worm tongue to follow him, saying, You do what Sharky says always, don't you, worm? Well, now he says, follow. At that, the worm tongue of the books finally turns on his master and slits his throat. We first meet Grima Wormtongue secretly betraying his king, Theoden. After his duplicity is discovered, he openly allies himself with the powerful Saruman, fleeing to the White Wizard's domain at Isengard. There, he serves his new master faithfully, yet miserably. 
In the films, he meets his ending early in the extended version of The Return of the King. After stabbing Saruman in a fit of rage, Wormtongue is felled by an arrow fired by Legolas. His last word, uttered moments before, is in defiance of Saruman's dismal prediction of his future. Free! He will never be free. No. In the book The Return of the King, a fed-up Grima backstabs Saruman again, this time in the Shire after his master is defeated by the hobbits. Just before he slits Saruman's throat and is shot by arrows, Wormtongue is accused by his master of murdering Frodo's cousin, to which he violently hisses, You told me to. You made me do it. Theoden is already quite old when Gandalf frees him from the spells of his counselor, Grima Wormtongue. After regaining control of himself, the King of Rohan leads his armies to Helm's Deep, where they win an epic victory by the skin of their teeth. They then head to Minas Tirith, where the aged ruler dies in a glorious charge that kicks off the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. It's none other than the Witch King himself who kills Theoden in battle. In the movies, his airborne beast lands on the king, whipping him around and sending both Theoden and his horse flying to their deaths. In the books, it's clarified that the Witch King actually kills Theoden's horse, who then falls on the king, crushing him to death. After Eowyn and Merry defeat the Witch King together, we get two different sets of Theoden's final words. In the film The Return of the King, Theoden says to Eowyn, I go to my father's, in whose mighty company I shall not now feel ashamed. He then whispers her name one last time before he dies. In the book, Theoden doesn't realize that Eowyn is nearby. His final words are spoken to her brother, Eomir, when he says, Hail, King of the Mark, ride now to victory, bid Eowyn farewell. Both the book and the film give Theoden satisfying last words, worthy of the noble king he was. The millennia-old Witch King is a recurring villain throughout the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He leads the Nine Ringwraiths on their deadly hunt for the ring, stabs Frodo at Weathertop, and leads the massive army that attacks Minas Tirith. After wreaking havoc on Middle-earth for thousands of years, the Witch King finally meets his end during the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Overconfident from millennia of successes and a prophecy that no living man can kill him, he recklessly gets involved in the fighting. After mortally wounding King Theoden, he is confronted by Eowyn and Merry, who work together to finish him off. In the movie, his ironic last words to Eowyn are, No man can kill me. Die now. In the books, his final words are a little different, but still set up Eowyn's iconic response before she strikes the killing blow. I am no man. <laughs> Although he's barely mentioned in the books, Gothmog is second in command during the Siege of Minas Tirith. However, in the film version of The Return of the King, Gothmog gets a much larger role as a leader high on his own authority, who is convinced that the age of the orc is about to begin. His involvement in the films makes him a big enough character to deserve a spot on this list. In The Return of the King, we see him ordering his soldiers around, dodging boulders, and commanding his men to brace for the charge of the Rohirrim. Later in the battle, Gothmog can be seen crawling towards the wounded Eowyn. With his weapon lifted to kill, Aragorn and Gimli arrive in the nick of time and finish him off. In order to catch his last words, you need to back up to just before the riders of Rohan come crashing into his army. Prepping his troops for the incoming tidal wave, his last words are the doomed command. As the steward of Gondor, Denethor is in charge of leading Gondor in the absence of the true king. Eventually, he breaks down under the pressure of the ongoing attack from Mordor and tries to burn himself and his son Faramir alive. In the movies, as Gandalf and Pippin arrive to stop him from murdering his son, Denethor's desperate near final words are, not take my from me. After Gandalf knocks him back onto the blazing pyre, Denethor gazes on his son and quietly utters his name as his last word, before running from the room and falling to his death. In the books, Denethor's last lines are directed at Gandalf before he lights the pyre, and then to his servant saying, But in this at least thou shalt not defy my will, to rule my own end. Come hither. 
come if you are not all requiem. After this, he sets the pyre on fire and purposefully lies down to die. As he lies there, he gives one great cry and then perishes amidst the flames. Although he doesn't appear in the theatrical version of The Return of the King, the mouth of Sauron makes a memorable appearance in the extended edition of the film. A powerful official in the Dark Lord's bureaucracy, he comes out to haggle with the captains of the West when they arrive at the gates of Mordor. In the books, while the character almost certainly dies when Sauron is defeated, he doesn't get any definitive last words. In the film, though, he's beheaded by Aragorn after foolishly taunting the long-lost king of Gondor. His last words before he's unceremoniously executed are, And who is this? Isildur's heir. It takes more to make a king than a broken elvish play. Gollum's last words come during his moment of greatest triumph, right before he meets his demise. The single-minded creature inadvertently saves the day by attacking Frodo Baggins in Mount Doom when he chooses to claim the ring rather than destroy it. Biting off Frodo's ring finger, Gollum finally reclaims his most prized possession, but then slips off the edge of the cliff and falls to a fiery death. In the film, The Return of the King, his final words are a victorious chant before Frodo tackles him and they both tumble off the cliff. In the book, Gollum also gleefully repeats the words precious over and over, but in Tolkien's version, he then steps backward just a tad too far and slips to his death without any help from Frodo. His final word comes out of the depths as he wails Precious one last time. While Sauron doesn't technically die, nor have any recorded last words, his ending is still worth noting as the main antagonist of the trilogy. Whether you're talking about his fiery eye falling from a crumbling tower in the films, or the more spiritual implication of his defeat in the books, his epic fall marks the climax of the entire trilogy. In the book The Return of the King, Gandalf explains what will happen to Sauron after the ring is destroyed, saying that, If the ring is destroyed, then Sauron will fall, and his fall will be so low that none can foresee his arising ever again. He will lose the best part of the strength that was native to him in his beginning, and all that was made or begun with that power will crumble, and he will be maimed forever, becoming a mere spirit of malice that gnaws itself in the shadows, but cannot again grow or take shape. So while Sauron may not be dead or have formal last words, there's no doubt that his fall marks a turning point for Middle-earth. Grishnok is an orc captain that shows up for a brief stint in the Two Towers when Merry and Pippin are being dragged across Rohan. In the book, he's the chief of the soldiers who serve the Dark Lord. He resists the uruk High captain Ugluk, who wants to speed the prisoners to Saruman and Isengard rather than the Sauron in Mordor. In Tolkien's original iteration, Grishnok tries to spirit away the hobbits from Ugluk soldiers so he can have the One Ring for himself. In this process, we hear his last words, which are, Untie your legs? I'll untie every string in your bodies. Do you think I can't search you to the bones? Search you. I'll cut you both to quivering shreds. I don't need the help of your legs to get you away and have you all to myself. After this, he tries to escape with both hobbits, but he's ridden down and skewered by a rider of Rohan, bringing his chapter-long road to a sudden end. In Peter Jackson's adaptation, the villain's fate is even worse. He survives the Rohirrim raid and chases the hobbits into Fangorn Forest. Limping and already bloodied from wounds, he yanks Merry out of a tree and says, Let's put a maggot hole in your belly. Unfortunately for Grishnok, he doesn't realize Treebeard is waking up behind him, and the Ent promptly stomps him out of existence. Hama is the doorword of Edoras, charged with guarding Theoden's house. However, it turns out he isn't great at his job, since he lets Gandalf into the hall with his staff in hand, inadvertently enabling the wizard to free Theoden from Wormtongue's bewitchment. But apart from his slip-up with the White Wizard, he's actually a faithful soldier. In the books, Hama releases Eomir from prison, arrests Wormtongue, and brings the King of the Golden Hall his sword. From there, Hama follows his lord to the Battle of Helm's Deep, where he tragically dies in the fighting. His last words come in conversation with a fellow soldier regarding Theoden's deposed advisor and the temporarily absent Gandalf. When the fellow says that Gandalf's eccentric behavior could be explained by Wormtongue, 
Hama's response is, true enough, but for myself, I will wait until I see Gandalf again. In the movie version, Hama doesn't make it as far as the battle. The captain of the King's Guard is killed on the way to Helm's Deep. His last words come when he's busy scouting ahead of the Rohirrim column. What is it? Hama? I'm not sure. A few seconds later, he's knocked over by a warg riding orc whose mount eats the loyal warrior face first. Madrill is a character that was purely invented for the Peter Jackson film adaptations. In The Two Towers, the Gondorian officer witnesses the events in Athelion where Faramir's forces ambush the Haradrim and then take Frodo, Sam, and eventually Gollum prisoner. After that, Madril heads back with the troop of rangers when they return to Osgiliath. In The Return of the King, he can be seen helping Faramir prepare the hopeless defense of the same ruined city. When the invading forces, led by the disfigured Gothmog, swarm across the river, they overrun the garrison with little effort. Amongst the Gondorian casualties is Madril, whose last on-screen words are as a faithful second-in-command. After saving his captain from his orc pursuers, he advises his lord. We can't hold them! The city is lost! Not long afterward, Madril is knocked down by his enemies and receives a cold-blooded spear to the heart from Gothmog as he lays helplessly in his enemy's path. While not technically dead, Frodo Baggins absolutely deserves to be on a list of last words from the heroes of Middle-earth. At the end of The Return of the King, the Ringbearer sails away into blissful retirement in the Undying Lands, but the truth is that he does so because he's so spiritually devastated by the ordeal of carrying the ring that he basically can't endure life in Middle-earth anymore. As Frodo prepares to leave, he tells Sam that although he was successful in saving the Shire, the peaceful life that he once lived is no longer available to him. Then, as he gives Sam the book he's written about their adventures, he adds, Lost pages are for you, Sam. In the book, after explaining why he's realized he cannot remain in the Shire, Frodo tells his ever-loyal gardener and best friend that he is his heir and must stay behind with his family. Frodo then finishes with an invitation for Sam to come and see him off at the harbor, saying, Come now. Ride with me. The Lord of the Rings may not be Bilbo Baggins' story, but the entire adventure wouldn't have taken place if it weren't for his epic adventure half a century beforehand. By the end of The Lord of the Rings, Bilbo was a very old hobbit who was waning quickly without the power of the One Ring to keep him from aging. The hobbit hero leaves his comfy retirement pad in Rivendell at the end of The Return of the King. He's feeling very old at this point but he rallies his strength to head overseas to the immortal Blessed Realm, an honor he's earned due to his legacy as one of the ring bearers. In the Return of the King book, Bilbo's last line comes when he meets Frodo and Sam on their way to the Grey Havens. Upon seeing them, Bilbo proudly declares to Frodo that thanks to the help of the One Ring, he has finally become the oldest hobbit of all time, surpassing even the lifespan of the old Took. His last line immediately follows this statement as he tells his cousin, And now, I think I am quite ready to go on another journey. Are you coming? In the movie adaptation, the line doesn't come until they actually reach the harbor, at which point the elderly Bilbo proclaims, I think I'm quite ready for another adventure. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about Middle Earth are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.